Marimo comes with a utility that allows you to take a scatter chart made with Altair and make it a whole lot more functional by allowing you to make selections. In this video, I'm gonna explain how that works. And as a motivating example, I have this one data set over here with properties of different cars. So there's a model of a car and this car has a specific miles per gallon. It has a number of cylinders. It's got some horsepower, right? So all these different properties, and this is a fun data set to plot. And in particular, let's make a chart that shows the miles per gallon. And let's compare that to the horsepower. And here's what that chart might look like. Again, I've got the miles per gallon on the x-axis over here, the horsepower on the y-axis, and you see a pretty interesting pattern too. There's this inverse relationship. If you want to get a very high mileage per gallon, odds are your car doesn't have the highest horsepower and uh, vice versa. Should be said, this data set is decades old, so these numbers are probably totally different nowadays. But this chart was made using Altair, and you can see the syntax for that down below over here. I start by giving Altair my data frame, I then tell it what kind of a chart I would like to make, and then there are all these aesthetic encodings that I can pass along, and this is how I can say what needs to be on the x-axis and what needs to be on the y-axis. Now, in terms of utility, this chart already paints a picture and it tells me a story, but it just kind of feels like I want to be able to make a quick selection to figure out what cars are actually in this corner and what cars are in this corner. And there are some small things you can do in Altair to help with this. A nice feature of Altair is that you are able to add a tooltip, and what that allows you to do is just hover over a point, and then you do get some information about what that one point is, but sometimes you want to build something more interactive, and preferably in a way that you can also interact with it from Python with Python code, and that way you can get creative with it. For this one use case, there is a utility inside of Marimo that you might be interested in using. So if you go to the UI submodule of Marimo, there is this Altair chart function that you want to call, and the only thing you got to do is just give it the chart that you've made beforehand. The chart looks exactly the same, but the behavior is now different. If I were to click and drag now, you can see that I'm actually able to make a selection. So to make use of that, I will now call this uh, MO chart just to give it a slightly different name. This is now stored in a nice little variable. I'm able to make a selection and I'm able to also move that around. But the thing that's really interesting here is that if I were to scroll down now, then you can see that I'm reusing that MO chart variable over here, that I'm able to grab the value. And each time that I change the selection above over here, then I just get the entire data frame that I've selected and I can do whatever thing I like with that. So one thing that I could do in this particular case, I could say, well, I like that model. That's the thing I'm mainly interested in. So this is a data frame. Let's just select that model over there. And gee, you know, maybe in this case, it'd be kind of nice to have that chart next to that data frame. So what I can now do is maybe go to Marimo, H stack to just stack these two things next to each other. Now, from a visual perspective, this is nice, right? Because I can just make a selection and I can immediately see what cars I've selected over here. So something about this just feels very convenient. But remember that we are also able to use that selection for something else later down the line in Python. Maybe I want to connect to a database to get additional information about these cars or something like that. Now, at this point, you might wonder, well, it's great that we're able to make these selections. It's definitely a cool feature. But I still want to be able to click and drag and zoom in. So how does that work? I'm on a Mac, so I would have to hold Command. I believe on Windows and on Linux, you'd have to hold Control. But if you hold down that button, then you can still easily zoom around as you would normally. So you're totally able to still pan around, move around to find those few instances that you want to select and then make that quick selection. There are lots of good use cases for this tool. One of my favorite ones is in the realm of embeddings, because what you can do is you can take a very wide embedding and turn it very thin by using something like UMAP. And when you do that, you tend to get interesting clusters that might be interesting to select. So this is from our gallery. Notice how I'm able to make a selection and this selection over here corresponds with an area of handwritten digits. And I can make another selection over here. Oh, that's all the zeros. And there's just something about exploring embedded space this way that feels very intuitive to me. And this is especially true if you're dealing with a new data set. But this is also only scratching the surface. This thing really has lots of different use cases. So feel free to get creative with this utility. I've left a few links in the show notes if you're interested in following along and playing around with this one in particular yourself as well.